Good afternoon, everyone. As I begin today, I'd like for you all to imagine yourselves on a road trip. Picture the destinations that would be along your way. I'm willing to bet, for many of you, these destinations will involve mountains and oceans and national monuments, because these great landscapes all have stories attached to them, stories of discovery and adventure. And this is true for my experience as well. But what's also true is that farmland will be an integral component of the, uh, the road trips that you go on. And farms also have a very interesting story to tell. And to understand these stories, we have to ask some questions. We have to know what the challenges are that the farmers face as they're working the land. And we also have to understand the innovative opportunities that are changing agriculture as I speak. This is a story about one opportunity in particular, but before I talk about that opportunity, I'd like to talk about a challenge, erosion. This is a photo from the Red River Basin in North Dakota. And what you're seeing is a farm suffering from the devastating effects of erosion. Erosion represents a loss, the loss of the soil that we need to grow the food that we eat. And with that soil, we have displaced nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, which can travel into our rivers, our streams, and our oceans, and concentrate there, forming dead zones, places where fish and other aquatic animals can no longer live. Unfortunately, highly erosive events will happen more frequently in the face of a changing climate. And climate change is something we need a really good toolkit for. But fortunately for us, we have many opportunities to develop this toolkit. And one of those opportunities is in cover crops. This is a field of red clover. It is a cover crop. It is a crop that is grown during a time of the year when we wouldn't normally grow anything. And it has the purpose of improving and protecting the soil. Now, the idea of using cover crops is by no means a new idea. In fact, it is ancient. We can see cover crops mentioned in Chinese manuscripts dated 3,000 years ago. We know that they were thought of by the ancient Greeks and the Romans. And we know that in the United States, cover crops have a presidential past. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson would actually exchange personal letters describing the types of cover crops that they were planting in their own fields. But today, only about 5% of the cropland in the United States is cover cropped. Why is that number so low? Well, one answer can be found by taking a trip to the 1920s, when a German man invented a process to take nitrogen from the atmosphere and fix it into a chemical form that humans could easily manipulate. This was actually originally intended for use on farms, because nitrogen is a really important nutrient for plant growth. But not long after the 20s came World War II in the 40s. And countries like the United States needed to make more explosive weapons. Well, it turns out that nitrogen is actually also an ingredient in making explosive weapons. So the US built several facilities to produce these explosive weapons by fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere. But as we all know from history, World War II ended. And so the US had these facilities. We decided to retrofit this technology to make fertilizers for our farms. And yes, nitrogen fertilizer is very good at promoting plant growth. It is a common practice in the United States to use it. But nitrogen fertilizer doesn't solve other problems on farms, problems like erosion. And that is where cover crops come in. They have a whole host of benefits that they can offer to our farms. So many, in fact, they, they can be likened to a Swiss Army knife in their utility. We know that they can cover the ground and prevent erosion. But we also know that their root systems can help rainfall 
to enter into the soil layer rather than having that rain run off of our fields. And they're really good at attracting pollinators like bees and butterflies to our farms. And that will increase the diversity of our systems. So by increasing the diversity of our above ground systems by planting cover crops and attracting these wonderful insects, we're also increasing the diversity of our soils, our soil ecosystems. And so by increasing the diversity of our soils, we're also increasing our soil health. Soil health is a really big topic to farmers and scientists today. And that's because healthy soils are resilient and they're productive. And a healthy soil is in fact so diverse that just one teaspoon of healthy soil can contain billions of microorganisms. And one of those microorganisms is bacteria. There can be one ton of bacteria in an acre of healthy soil. That's the equivalent weight of two cows. So we can imagine that these two cows are living in our soils and we want them to survive. What is one thing we need to give them to survive? Food. We have to feed them. We wouldn't dare to not feed two cows for several months of the year because they would die. And so in the same way, we're starting to think about feeding our soil biology. With cover crops, we can achieve this. Cover crops also help increase the organic matter on our fields. Organic matter is plant leaves and stems and roots that'll decompose over time and add nutrients to our fields. And when we talk about organic matter, we talk in terms of percentages. So on most of the productive farms in the United States, we have about a three to 6% amount of soil organic matter present. This doesn't seem like very much, three to 6%, but it's very significant. And that's because soil organic matter acts to help our, uh, our soil storm our water. It helps our so soils act like a sponge. And just a 1% increase in this organic matter can help us store an additional 27,000 gallons on one acre. If we extrapolated that to the entirety of the cropland in the United States, a 1% increase in soil organic matter could help us store the equivalent amount of water that flows over Niagara Falls for 150 days of the year. That is an astounding amount of water. And we can do this by planting cover crops. So we can see that cover crops help us prevent erosion. And they improve our soil health. And they also help our soil store more water. It's benefits like these that inspire me to think of cover crops as if they were superheroes. And so today, I'd like for you to meet four cover crop species that I think are superheroes. And hopefully, you can understand the kind of impact that they can have on our land. First up is Crimson Clover. Have you ever heard a better superhero name than Crimson Clover? <laughs> but it's notable for other things than just its name. For one, it is a legume cover crop. So it's very good at taking nitrogen from the atmosphere and fixing it into the surrounding soil ecosystem. This would allow a farmer to replace some of their input costs of buying that industrial fertilizer we talked about earlier and help them provide their own natural fertilizer inputs to their farms. Next, we have the oilseed radish. Oilseed radish is notable because it's really good at preventing soil compaction. The soil gets compacted when heavy machinery like tractors run over the fields throughout the season. But a compacted soil does not allow water to enter it. And it can contribute to the problem of water running off the land and increasing rates of erosion. So we have a solution for this. We can plant the oilseed radish, which as you can see in this image, has a very long root. And it'll open up the soil and allow it to accept that water from rainfall. Our third cover crop is cereal rye. Cereal rye is known as the queen of cover crops because it is the most used cover crop in the United States. It grows tall and it grows quickly. And for these reasons, it's really good at keeping the soil in place and preventing erosion, but also adding that organic matter that we want to the soil. 
And lastly, this next cover crop is something you might be more familiar with in the kitchen, the turnip. Turnips, as it turns out, are one of my favorite root vegetables. And as much as I like them, so do the cows. So after a farmer has harvested their cash crop of corn or soy, they can plant a cover crop of turnips to protect the soil while earning extra income from bringing cattle in to graze on this delicious feast. Additionally, another benefit is that cows poop and so farmers have this natural, nutrient-rich manure spread all over their fields. So we can see that cover crops do amazing things, but we still don't know what they do to the cash crops grown after them, the corn or the soy or cotton or wheat grown after the cover crop is terminated. Well, recent studies have shown that we can see a 2 to 12% yield increase in corn and soy grown after a cover crop is planted. This is important for two reasons. One, yield increases mean more productivity. We are producing more food. And two, these yield increases are actually higher during times of drought. This means that cover crops can help our farms become resilient we're going to be able to bounce back after adverse weather events like drought. But I bet some of you are still wondering about one thing, money. Does it make financial sense to plant cover crops? Because if it doesn't, farmers probably won't adopt this practice. So when we think about money, we need to think in terms of costs and benefits. The costs associated with planting cover crops include buying the seed, planting the seed, maintaining the crop as it's growing, and also any time and labor that will go into these processes. And we need to terminate that cover crop before we plant something else after it. But the benefits that we can see include extra income from grazing cattle over our fields. We can also have extra income from that increased yield that we talked about. And cover crops, as you've seen, can provide us with natural sources of nitrogen fertilizer as well as natural sources of weed and pest management. So we will decrease our input costs of production by planting cover crops since we might not have to buy as much fertilizer or pesticides. All in all, we could see a potential profit from planting cover crops of $28 to $72 an acre. And this does make financial sense. One of the farmers that believes in the power of cover crops is Keith Burns. Keith is a farmer in Nebraska. He works on his family farm with his brother. And they've been farming there for several years, but a few years ago they tried cover crops for their first time. And they were seeing success with this. So much success that farmers in their region were coming to Keith and his brother looking for advice on using cover crops, but also wanting to buy some cover crop seeds from them. So Keith and his brother decided to turn this into a business, and they started to sell cover crop seeds. This is called green cover seed. And today, green cover seed has over 1,000 customers in 40 states across the country. Something really innovative that Green Cover Seed does is that they make custom cover crop mixes, which I don't think I have the slide up, but imagine a beautiful photo <laughs> of a lot of seeds of different colors and shapes and sizes. And also imagine that I'm a farmer and I'm really interested in planting cover crops on my fields. But I have a wish list. I want these cover crops to reduce my soil compaction. I want them to reduce erosion from my fields. And I also want that natural nitrogen input so that I don't have to pay as much for fertilizers. I'm gonna give this wish list to Green Cover Seed along with information about my soils and my climate, and they will make me my own custom seed mix for cover crops that I can plant on my own farm. But you can see today that we're at a dividing line in agriculture. Oh no. We're at a dividing line in agriculture. On the one side, it is common practice to leave our soils bare and prone to loss and degradation. 
But on the other side, we have this potential to plant cover crops and green our fields, to protect our soils, to prevent erosion, reduce compaction, improve our soil health, and bolster the financial resources of our farms. But what can we all do about this? Well, if you are a gardener or an aspiring gardener like I am, we can plant cover crops in our own gardens. But I think in the bigger picture, we can all familiarize ourselves with the story of the land that we pass by. Because though we aren't all farmers, we do all have to eat and share the bounty of this planet. And by knowing the story of the land, we can better connect to it. We can familiarize ourselves with the challenges that we all face in managing it, and we can be empowered to support the solutions, like cover crops, that exist to meet those challenges. Thank you.